My name is Zachary Fabry. I am from um, Miami, Florida, born and raised. My mom is Jamaican and my dad is Hungarian. My name is Michelle Isava. I'm born in Trinidad. When I make a performance, I want uh, the audience or the viewer or the passerby um, to walk away with some kind of experience, something visceral, something uh, magical, um, and some, and some kind of awareness um, that wasn't there before. Doing performance, I kind of like stumbled upon it through reading, and I kind of like had to find my own way to it and for me it meant a way to process experiences so that's pretty much what it's about it's from personal experiences that I try to translate and take out of myself out of my body it shifts depending on the body of work that I'm making so I grew up with like black people and I think that that's where my work kind of pulls from um, so to simplify, I would say my target audience is black people. But that's, uh, that's cutting off a lot of other people. So that's why, that's why I say there's shifts. I don't think I really have a target audience or that I really consider them. It's more recently that I do consider an audience. I think interacting more with other performers, um, witnessing their process has led me to really question my own and if I really want to continue this way. I start with, with my idea first um, and then immediately bounces to, um, to the audience. Um, physically where they are located as, a, as in reference to where I'm located. Um, uh, also what their um, ethnicity and nationality is. How much information they have about any Topic. You know, basic questions like what is the message and, and the sensitivity to your audience. I, I think I risk or I already am quite self-indulgent and in doing so, what does the audience have to gain? So these are, these are the questions that have kind of slowed me down a bit. I make no apologies for the fact that I am seeking something out of this, but I never question at first what am I giving to anybody else? I guess I just hope that they could relate and that would be enough or it's beyond my understanding, like it would be something transcendental, but at this point I'm looking for more clarity. I guess when I make work that is um, rooted in the black experience, um, then, um, then black folks, um, people of color, um, Anyone, anyone that has an ex some kind of experience of being like the other in terms of racial um, experience, uh, they always kind of they always get my work in some ways. They understand it um, better than let's say uh, than like white white folks. So uh, it's important for me to make my work first um, and not cater it for any specific audience um, because people are going to have their own associations, they're going to come with their own experience and um, levels of information. Um, so I guess I just can't control that. Well I've performed in three different countries and I think in each it's taken very very differently. In Trinidad there isn't much performance art but there is a lot of performance it, it's so much that it's it seems I mean like this is a this is a very heavy question you know like it's like it's a de debate um, performance is a natural cultural thing and the gestures of the Caribbean body you know all these kinds of things carnival folk tradition but performance art as how I interpret it coming from the states or Europe 1960s to me it was an expression of angst which I believe as a Caribbean person, I still feel this because it's a human experience. 
so it's my choice how to express it. So when I perform, it is not the same as carnival performance or a theatrical performance. So I don't think there is a context for me, as opposed to performing in, in Germany where people are very stoic. They're, they're so accustomed to performance, like if it's an industry, like, oh, let's, let's go, or another form of entertainment, so let's go and check out this show tonight, and it doesn't matter how graphic it is or how, how raw it is, it's just a simple clap at the end of it. Venezuela falling in the middle, it has merged um, folk traditions into performance as a thing that has historical context abroad, you know, in Europe, in the States. They made it their own, they made it indigenous. They have ways to fuse it. So, when I've been there, that is the most accepted I've ever felt, the most comfortable I've ever felt, because I just found other people like me. When I say like me, I mean my age, my color, but notice that the audience and then the enthusiasm where so that it just seems you know like the, the message is there to be understood and communicated. I wanted to take that challenge of not trying to define Harlem or not trying to um, pin it down because that's impossible, but to then just choose one segment, choose one facet of this place. There's a new target in East Harlem that was just built a few years ago. And so I was thinking about this Target store, this like big box store, as they're called, and this like huge corporate store. And what does it mean that this store is in, Har in East Harlem? Basically, all my questions kind of resulted in me kind of coming up with a new idea of um, having a conversation with um, shoppers. But to kind of complicate things a little bit more, I went to Target and uh, when I first got there, I bought a red shirt and khaki pants, which just happens to be the uniform for um, for the Target. And then I walked around the store, and um, and I kind of with no name tag, um, and I asked shoppers, I was like, "Hey, um, how are you doing today? I'm on the floor doing customer relations, and can I ask you three questions?" And most of them were like, "Sure." And I said, like, "Okay, I won't take up your time. Just three quick questions." First question was. Um, why do you shop at Target? And most everyone said it was because it's cheap, the cheapest place. And I was like, cool. Second question, um, is Target cheaper than the small mom and pop stores in this area? And most of them were like, sure, it's cheaper. Um, and, uh, and I was like, okay, last question, third question, I'll let you go. Do you think that this Target is taking business away from those small mom and pop stores? And most people like engaged in that kind of conversation and they were like, sure, we think it's um, this big store must be affecting the neighborhood. They must be taking money away from the small stores that were here before. And we would talk about that in a very like, simple, plain terms. But then other people felt threatened. They felt like um, I was critiquing their, uh, their choices of, uh, of where they shopped. Um, and it was interesting just to kind of feel the difference between those two responses. My goal was not to uh, critique the consumer, the shopper, the resident, because I shop at Target like almost three times a week. Um, not at the one in East Harlem, but I shop at the one in Brooklyn. So um, that was an interesting kind of piece for me. It kind of opened up some ideas within performance and um, having like an intimate conversation. Ultimately, after my third time, I was kicked out of Target because the, the assistant manager just was confused and didn't know why I was there, so they asked me to leave. Um, and I, I gladly left. I didn't want to make any trouble. I didn't want to go to jail. Um, and then I went back the next day, and they were ready for me, I think. They, as soon as I walked in and I bought my red shirt, I bought my khaki pants, I went to the bathroom, changed my clothes, came out. I think I talked to like three people. And then I heard just I heard walkie talkies, and they basically triangulated me um, in menswear, and then they just cornered me, security guard, police officer, all the managers, and they're like, no, no, why are you here? Why are you wearing red and khaki pants? And I was like, well, that's, I think it's a nice color combination. And they were like, no, 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 cut the bullshit. Just like, what are you doing here? And I was like, well, I'm trying to figure out why people are shopping at Target. 
and that conversation went on for a long time. And ultimately, I can't go back to Target. Um, well, I can go back to Target, but I can't go back to Target dressed with red and khaki pants and talk to people. But I can go back to Target dressed normally and talk to people. So yeah, there's some, there's some rules about how I can go to Target now.